Hi there, my name is Charles Wosfan Musipa. In this presentation, I would like to discuss with you evaluation of complex integration. By this time, we've seen, the, we've seen and discussed the following. The first situation we looked at concerning the theory of integration of complex function was uh, what we call the Cauchy's theorem. In this case, this theorem presented a situation like this we were integrating complex function f of z, which is uh, supposed to be analytic in and on a simple closed curve C. And the conclusion of that the theorem was that if we're integrating a complex function which is analytic in and on a closed simple curve C, the integral is zero. Now, applying the same uh, effect we're able to do some discussions which made us arrive at the conclusion that if we are integrating a function like this, which is f of, of z equals to 1 over z to the power n, we get the following results that when n is equal to 1, in this case we'll be having 1 over z, we've got the integral being 2 pi i, and for the case where n is different from 1, the integral equal to 0. And in this same situation was sort of generalized for n equals to 1 to this situation whereby we have got 1 over z minus z0, where z0 is the pole of the function. We also get a similar result that when z0 is inside the cave, the integral is 2 pi i, and when z0, the pole is outside the curve, the function becomes analytic, and by Cauchy's theorem, then the integral becomes zero. Then that led us to a situation whereby we've got a function f of z, which has got several poles within a simple closed curve C. In this case, we've got z0, z1, up to zn, so our discussion led us to concluding that the integral of f of z along the simple closed path c is actually equal to the integral of f of z around a small circle like gamma zero here which contains the initial pole z zero plus the integral of same function around uh, along the path gamma one and that gamma 1 is contained a single pole, z0, and then up to gamma zn, where the path is gamma n. So what I'm saying is simple that uh, integrating around this simple closed curve is same as integrating only around the circles, around the pole, and the pole, in this case, I isolated each circle contains one Oh, so having that the case now, I want to look at an example which presents exactly the situation and see how we interact between these two, uh, deal with these, these different situations to give a value to an integral given. So in this case, let's look at the following. Let's say we're integrating integral. I hope you notice here, my drawing of this section is anticlockwise, meaning that the integration is given a positive orientation. And so integrating f of z, in this case, f of, our f of z is dz, is equal to one over z, z plus one, multiplied by z minus two. So I take a case whereby our function f of z has got uh, three poles within the cycle, which poles are going to be 0, minus 1, and 2. Note that our function here is uh, f of z equals to 1 over z, z plus 1 multiplied by z minus 2. So in this situation, in order to exploit our results here, we need actually to take this function to a form more or less like this and like this when n 
is equal to 1 because here we've got z to the power 1. So what we need for that, we need to take this f to its partial fractions form as a over z plus b over z plus 1 plus c over z minus 2. Now when we've done that, we know that the integral of this expression is equal to the sum of the integral of this, uh, uh, these terms, knowing having calculated our a, our b, and c. Now, I hope you trust my calculations. I've already determined that a is equal to minus half, or I'm going to be bitter and tight here, just to, right, because I'm not going to work it out. Then our b is equal to one third, and our c is equal to one sixth. So having that, then we can expand this integral and write it as initially the integral over c of minus half over z plus um, one third over z plus one plus one six over z minus two dz. Now, if we want to reduce this situation now from c to the little gammas containing one pole at a time, then we're going to write this as equals to the integral. Let's do one, uh, two things at a time here. The constants we know normally can be taken outside the integral sign, so we're going to write here minus half and then gamma zero, and then the other point is going to be dz over z. The next thing is we're going to have one third integral over gamma one, where we're going to have uh, dz over z minus minus one. My way of writing this way, I'm trying to adopt the form of this expression, which now serves as a kind of a formula for us. So it is clear now that this pole is minus one, and according to what we've done, it, uh, we're shown in this picture, is that this pole must be one, only one pole within this circle. Now it is an associated pole which is within this circle, gamma one plus one six integral, now comma two, then here we're integrating dz over z minus two, which is already in this type of an integral. Now, once we've done that, what we have, we need to refer to these results which were established, and in this case, here we know that this is, the pole here is zero, and according to this type of isolation, this zero is sitting inside this gamma zero. So, in other words, this integral, not including half, according to what we have here, is going to be two pi i. A similar situation is going to happen here. It's going to be two pi i multiplied by this constant, and it's 2 pi i multiplied by that constant. So evaluating this, this is what we're going to do now. We're going to have here minus half, and the value here is this case for m equals to 1, the integral is 2 pi i, so we're going to say minus half times 2 pi, the imaginary unit i, plus 1 third multiplied by 2 pi, multiplied by the imaginary unit, then plus 1 over 6 multiplied by 2 pi i. So what we need to do now, we need to add this, and uh, then we have got the value of our integral. So what we can do now is just working with fractions here, we can work out a common denominator here. Let's just expand this one here by 2 and multiply there by 2, and this one, expand this by 3, and multiply it by 3, 
So what we have here is, my, is minus 6. Yes, we've got here minus 6 over 6. And here we've got uh, 4 over 6. And here we've got 2 over 6. So we can get this, this 4. 4 over 6 plus 2, which is 6. And here we've got 6 over 6. And in this case, the integral is going to be equals to, to 0. I hope it's clear, but I can check my calculations in case I've got, uh, made some numerical errors, but I think so far we're correct. So just recapping, let's see what you've done. We're given an expression like this. We've got all these facts plus this one. So what you do, what you did is resolve this function here, 1 over 1 over z by z plus 1 by z minus 2. We resolve by means of partial fractions and get this expression which is a sum of these individual fractions which make up this one. So then since integration is linear, we then integrate each one of them and also checking out the constants. And then once we've got that, and noting the fact that the poles we are having here, minus one here, two there, and the zero there, are sitting inside the corresponding parts of integration then according to what we have here, all these integrals are 2 pi i, 2 pi i, then we get there and conclude that. Then I hope you can now be able to repeat similar problems and uh, practice this kind of, of work. Okay, for your individual practice on this type of work, I've got the following two examples, which you must do as a group or as an individual. It's important that at the end of the day you are able to do this work on your own. So we've got here uh, some homework. First we've got uh, the integral c dz over 2z plus 1, z minus 3. Here I'm going to give you uh, various options for c. In this case, in one case, let's say c is a second centered at um, minus seven and the radius half. And secondly, C is a second Z minus one radius five. And the second example is integral long C of DZ over Z plus three I, which is a a pure imaginary pole there, multiplied by z minus 1. In this last case here, we've got to be c being a second, say that it's 0, radius. Uh, so, you must try these examples and see that you, you make sense of what you're supposed to do and you please practice. The rest of the examples, you can get them from your text. Otherwise, for now, Thank you for listening and goodbye.